everyone I hope you're having a fantastic day in today's tutorial I'm so excited to share with you the tutorial on how to make this messenger bag this bag is designed to be a crossbody bag but you can also since we're gonna use the adjustable um, strap you can also adjust this and make this into a shoulder bag if you wish to and um, there are several pockets inside. There is a zipper pocket and a couple of slip pockets. So the finish measurement of this bag will be approximately 11 inches by 13 inches. I think it's a great size, not too big but not too small. So this bag is made out of six uh, two and a half inches strips or they call it also a jelly roll. Um, you can also cut your own uh, fabric strip. All you need to do is just cut from one salvage end to another two and a half inches um, wide. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any question at all, leave me a comment down below. I would love to answer you. So enough of me talking, let's get started. For the exterior shell of the bag, we're going to use six jelly roll strips. These are the two and a half inches strips of pre-cut fabric that you can easily find in a fabric store or quilting store or online. Now you wanna open these strips and lay them out just like so. Once you're happy with the arrangement, you want to go ahead and sew them with quarter inch of seam allowance. Once you've done sewing, you want to give this a quick press. Now we're gonna first straighten up the edge by cutting the selvage end first, like about an inch off. Then you wanna measure in 14 inches and then cut. Then you wanna cut another piece with the same measurement. So now you've got two rectangles measuring 14 by 12 and a half inches. These are going to be the front and the back exterior shell of the bag. Now with the fabric left over, you want to measure in 7 inches and cut. And then from this piece, you want to trim an inch off from both sides. And this is going to be the flap for the back. Now you're going to sandwich these pieces with the quilt batting and the backing fabric. The backing fabric here is going to act as the interlining of this bag so it doesn't matter what your fabric choice for this you can use your least favorite fabric just to get rid of it as long as it's a quilt weight fabric it will work and of course the next thing that you're gonna do is to quilt these pieces I'm going to quilt this with the diamond shape design so I'm gonna start by drawing diagonal lines here. I'm using the width of my ruler as the gap for the distancing between the lines. Then I'm gonna do the same on the opposite side. So this is how it turned out after I quilted. So obviously you can use any quilting design that you prefer. You can do free motion if that's what you like and yeah just feel free to experiment. Now go ahead and trim off all the excess batting and the backing fabric. You're gonna need about a yard of fabric for the lining, the strap, and the pockets as well. Out of this fabric, you're gonna need to cut two 14 by 12 and a half inches rectangle for the lining, 10 and a half by 7 inches rectangle for the flap. Two 10 by 8 inches rectangles for the zipper pocket and two 12 and a half by 7 inches rectangles for the slip pockets. And then you want to cut two 4 inches strips of fabric. Simply want to cut this from selvage to selvage. We're going to use this to make the crossbody strap and the strap anchors as well. Now we're going to work on the magnetic snap. So take your flap lining and we're going to attach the male part of the magnetic snap, this one. So you want to measure up two inches from the bottom, right on the center fold line there. 
The way you find the center fold line is simply to fold your fabric in a half and then go give it a quick press and then you will find that center fold crease right there. You want to also mark this on the wrong side, the same thing. Then you want to take a couple of interfacing. I like to double mine because my interfacing is quite lightweight. It's the woven interfacing. You want to cut this roughly about an inch and a half um, square. And once you've done fusing it, you want to turn this to the right side. Now take the washer. If you see there are three holes there and you want to match this center hole with the mark just like so and then you want to take your fabric marker and trace those two side lines then you want to cut these two side lines using your seam ripper just like so now take the magnetic snap and then insert the two prongs inside those two holes that we just created then turn this to the wrong side, place the prongs just like so. Then use your thumbs and push these prongs to the side right there. Now you want to take your flap piece and place these right side together with the lining. Use some fabric clips to keep them in place. Then you want to sew the sides and the bottom with half an inch of seam allowance. Once you've done sewing, go ahead and cut the bottom corners here with a scissor. Now you're gonna turn this flap inside out, then use a knitting needle or a chopstick to poke the corners here. Now go ahead and top stitch this all around. Once you've done top stitching the flap, Go ahead and take your back exterior piece. I like to keep the patchwork of the flap sitting on the opposite direction of the patchwork of the exterior shell. Now you want to place the flap right on the center here. And then I want to take my fabric clip here to secure it in place. Then you want to sew this with quarter inch of seam allowance to tuck it in place. Now we are going to attach the female magnetic snap on the front piece of the exterior shell. So you want to measure down three and a half inches from the top. Then you want to do the same way we did before with the male part of the magnetic snap. The only difference is you do not need to interface this because we already got the quilt batting underneath and that should suffice to stabilize your magnetic snap. Draw one and a half inch square on each corner bottom of your front and back exterior shell and then cut those with a scissor. We do this to create that boxy corner. Now lay your front and back exterior shell right side together and then you want to secure them with pin or fabric clips. Once you've done that, go ahead and sew the side seams and the bottom as well. Now we're going to work on the bottom corner. So open this little corner and you want to match the two seams right there. Secure that in place with a clip and then sew this with half an inch of seam allowance. Then you want to do the same with the other side as well. Alright, now you may turn this inside out just to make sure that everything is looking alright so far. And I think it is looking awesome. Great, now we're gonna move on and work on the pockets. Lay your slip pocket pieces right side together and then you want to go ahead and sew the top and the bottom with half an inch of seam allowance. Once you've done that, you want to go ahead and press the seams open. Then you want to turn this piece inside out. And then go ahead and top stitch along the top here. Lay your pocket piece on top of your lining piece, two and a half inches down from the top. Draw a vertical line six inches away from the left. Then you want to measure a quarter inch from that line 
and draw another line right there. Then you want to connect those two lines from the top here, right on your top stitching line. Then we're going to sew from the bottom to the middle, following these lines and go back to the bottom. Then you're going to end up with something like this. Don't worry about the sides here. It's going to get sewn anyway when you sew the side seams together. Now take your zipper pocket piece. As you can see here, I folded the piece in a half and then press it to find the center fold. So lay this one wrong side up. We are going to draw a rectangle measuring 8 by half an inch. So first you need to measure down an inch and a half from the top and draw a horizontal line measuring 8 inches. Then you want to measure down half an inch and draw another horizontal line measuring 8 inches. And once you've got your rectangle drawn, go ahead and draw a horizontal line on the center right then you want to draw two diagonal lines on the corner here, about 3 eighths of an inch, forming a triangle shape. And then you want to do the same on the other side. Now you want to lay this on top of your back lining piece, about 2 inches away from the top. And you want to pin that in place. Then you want to go ahead and sew this only on the outer line. Once you've done sewing, we're going to cut through this center line and those diagonal lines on the corner. So I like to start with my seam ripper and then I will continue with my scissor. And you want to be careful not to cut through the stitches here when you get to the corner. Once you've done cutting, you want to turn this to the other side and finger press that following those cutting lines. And then go ahead and give this a quick press. Once you've done that, you want to turn this pocket piece to the wrong side of the lining. And you want to smoothen those corners and the fold line as well and go ahead and press this again so everything will be nice and neat. Now you want to prepare your zipper. The length of your zipper should be at least 8 inches and obviously mine is a lot longer here but since this is a nylon zipper I can always um, trim this off later. So I'm just going to pin the zipper teeth here just to keep it shut while I'm working and as always I'm going to use my wash away wonder tape so I'm going to cut this about 8 inches obviously and then place it right on the edge of the zipper just like so now I'm going to cut another one and place it on the other side then you want to peel that top layer off then I'm going to move my zipper pull a little bit to the center. Then place the lining fabric on top of the zipper, just like so. Now you want to go ahead and sew this all around. So I'm comfortable using my walking foot to do this job, but you can also use your zipper foot or the normal one that usually comes with your machine. Once you've done sewing, you want to turn this to the wrong side and if you're using longer zipper, go ahead and trim that first. Now you want to take the second zipper pocket piece, lay that on top of your zipper, right side down just like so and then you want to sew this all around with half an inch of seam allowance. Alright, so now that our lining pieces is ready to go, we are going to assemble them. 
you're gonna do basically the same thing as when you do the exterior shell starting off by creating the square corner here and then you want to go ahead and place them right side together pin that in place and then you want to go ahead and sew the side seams and the bottom however you are going to leave about four and five inches opening right there so this is how your lining going to turn out and here is the bottom opening to make the strap anchor you need to cut a four by five inches of rectangle then you want to fold this in half and press and then you want to open it up and fold the two edges towards the center fold and then press and then you want to fold them again then you want to go ahead and sew this all around so you will end up with a one inch strip now you want to go ahead and cut this strip in half so you will end up with two two and a half by one inch strip prepare your d-rings so we're going to use two one inch d-rings here then insert your strap anchor and then you want to place this on the side of your back right where the side seam is then you want to place your strap anchor with the d-ring attached and i want to secure that with the fabric clip here then you want to go ahead and sew this with quarter inch of seam allowance you will need a 60 inches long of fabric strip to make the crossbody strap since the quilt weight fabric usually comes only 42 inches from the bolt in this case you will need to join two fabric strips together to do that you want to cross your fabric just like so leaving about 3 8 of an inch of tail on both ends then you want to draw a diagonal line from this corner to that corner once you've done that you want to go ahead and sew on this line once you've sewn this you want to go ahead and cut the excess fabric here open this one up and now go ahead and give this a quick press now you're going to prepare your interfacing I recommend using the fusible woven interfacing and you will need to cut 2 inches by 59 inches out of this you may cut several pieces rather than one long strip lay your interfacing on the wrong side of your fabric strip glue side down half an inch away from the edge just like so then you want to go ahead and fuse this with an iron alright now you want to fold the edge in and press and then you want to fold the strap in half just like so and press then you want to fold the edges here towards the center fold and press then you want to fold this again in half and press so you're gonna end up with something like this now go ahead and sew this strap all around alright so our strap is ready now it's time to work on assembling the back so here is my external piece and here is my lining piece first you want to turn your exterior piece to the wrong side then you want to insert your lining piece so you want to keep this lining piece on the right side so the right side of your lining piece should be touching the right side of your exterior piece and of course the front side of your lining piece should be facing the front side of your exterior piece and the back side of your lining piece should be facing the back side of the exterior piece now we're going to use fabric clip to secure this in place so I'm going to start from the side seam here just matching up the side seam of the exterior piece with the side seam of the lining 
Now we are going to sew this all around with half an inch of seam allowance. Once you've done sewing this, we're going to pull the lining and find that opening hole in the bottom. Then you want to go ahead and turn this back inside out through that opening hole. Alright, now you are going to smoothen up the edges here. I'm gonna use my Hera marker, but you may simply use your finger or coin or give it a quick press. Then we're going to top stitch this all around. Since we're going to sew some very bulky part here, I recommend changing your needle to a size larger. So I've been using the size 9014 needle and now I'm going to use the 116 size needle or also called jeans size needle. You may also want to increase the length of your stitching. I use 3mm stitch length for this. And when you get to the side seam here, it may be a little difficult to go through. So you can do hand cranking and use your hand to help um, feeding the fabric, but not pushing it. Once you've done top stitching, you want to pull the lining out. Find that opening hole at the bottom and then you want to go ahead and sew this close. Now we're going to attach the strap to the back. So prepare your strap and your adjuster. We are using the 1 inch adjuster here. Now take one end of your strap and fit that through the hole just like so from the wrong side to the right side and then go back to the wrong side you wanna have about an inch and a half of clearance here then you're gonna sew two lines to secure this in place so you wanna sew this back and forth at least three times just to make sure that your strap have extra bond Now, you're going to take the other end of your strap and let me set the other one aside and you want to feed this into one of the D-ring from the inside towards the outside, just like so. Now you want to take the adjuster right side up, just like so. Then you want to feed this strap from the wrong side towards the right side and then back to the wrong side. Then you want to pull this strap and you want to make sure that there is no twist. Now you want to fit this to the other D-ring from the outside towards the inside, just like so. Making sure you have about an inch and a half of clearance over there. Then you want to go ahead and sew two lines to secure this in place. Again, you want to sew this back and forth at least three times just to make sure that your strap is strongly reinforced. And that is it guys, you've got yourself a beautiful messenger bag that you can wear every day or you can also sell this online or give it to somebody that you love. And that's all I have for you today guys. Thumbs up if you like this video and I shall see you next time with another sewing project. Goodbye!